Good morning, students. Welcome back. Uh, last week, when we did the class, I was reading out Swami Vivekananda chapter one for you, and I had also asked you all to record the video and send. Today, I have sent the homework to you. Okay? What you need to do? You need to read this page. Ask your parents to take a video and send it back. I want to know how well you read the book. Okay? This is a homework. You all have to do definitely. Today, uh, yesterday, uh, last week when I was reading this book, I told you about Sma Swami Vivekananda. You know, like how good person he was, what qualities he had, and uh, about him that he wanted to become a coachman, right? He wanted to become a coachman, but his mother said him to become a coachman like Krishna, who directed Arjuna, right? Then we read and we read and we, I left you in a. a in a position where you did not know whether he met the right people or whether he could see God or not, right? So I left you with the suspense whether he could see God or not. So now I'm going to read from the next paragraph, okay? The desire to see God grew day by day, okay? He was desiring to see God. Finally, one day he became successful when he could meet his Guru, okay? From whom he got the answer to his desire. Now we got to know that finally his desire to see God was fulfilled through one of his gurus whom he met. Okay, he could see God. The guru who made this possible for Naren was Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa could help him experience God. Thus, Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa became Naren's spiritual guru. Okay, now we saw the, see that in the last class we saw that he was wanting to see God but he didn't get any, any satisfactory answer from anyone. Okay, but uh, now we see that he got a guru. The guru's name was Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Okay, and this guru helped him to see God. Okay, he was able to lead him in the right direction. Now what we see what happens next. Swami Vivekananda did not stop with this. He went on and on, walked miles, travelled all over the country to discover the truth. What was the truth? Okay. Naren was kind to all. He had sympathy for the poor. He was, he was courageous too. We know that he saw God. Now after seeing God, he wanted to do good and he wanted to find the truth, what is there in the world. So he went on and he was a very sympathetic, pers sympathetic person and he used to help others and he was very courageous as well. These qualities helped him become a wandering monk. Last week I gave you that word, word meaning wandering. That means going from place to place in search. Okay, search or just going place to place. So here we see that he became a wandering monk. Okay, traveling alone to all the places to help the needy. See the purpose behind his wandering was to help the needy. So once you see God, see he was desiring to see God. Once he saw God, what changes do you see in him? You see that he was very sympathetic and he wanted to help people and he started going here and there trying to reach people and trying to help the needy people. Okay, he often expressed his idea on education. Okay, according to him, education should develop a complete human being. What does he mean by that? Education should develop a complete human being. So, does this education help you to become a good human being? See, uh, what he means is every education should lead to a goal and the goal is of becoming a perfect human being. Who is a perfect human being? A person who is good by nature, who is spiritual, who is helping, who is very compassionate. Right? The things that we read about Swami Vivekananda. Right? He made a speech in the Great Hall of Columbus in the Parliament of Religions at Chicago on 11th September 1893. 1893 is long, long, long before. He began his address with the words, Sisters and Brothers of America. Immediately there was thunderous applause from the vast audience and it lasted for two minutes. So it made a difference like, you know, instead of uh, addressing the crowd as ladies and gentlemen and all that, he started with brothers and sisters, which is very colloquial. In other sense, it makes everybody in the same platform, everybody equal there. Okay, so they were really happy the way he addressed them. 
The Swami spoke of the religion that was very vast as the sky and deep as the ocean. Further, he thanked all those who had assembled there. He referred to the Indians of all classes and sects. He said about the Hindu religion that in the true sense it embraces all humanity and declared, I am proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance. So here we see that Swami is speaking about his religion which is Hindu religion and he says that this religion is uh, it embraces the humanity and it accepts everybody and it tolerates with everything that is happening around. We believe not only in universal tolerance but we accept all religions as true. He says that the Hinduism accepts all the religions as true. These words were very impressive. He observed that the divisions in society based on religion has re resulted in human hatred. It is true children sometimes because of the religious friction there is a lot of hatred among us. So yes he, he found that it was, it, it, the division was caused because of the religious differences. He felt that human society should be far more advanced when there were no divisions. Right? He felt that it would be far more advanced if there are no divisions. Swami Vivekananda expressed his hope saying that the time for driving, driving away these evil forces in the society had come. So what he believes that even in the 19, 1893 or 19, uh, uh, 19 something he believed that uh, there shouldn't be any division based on the religion. And he said these things should be eradicated. He told them that everybody should develop a sense of brotherhood and love for each other. So true children, if you look at everybody as brother and sister, there will be a lot of harmony, there will be a lot of unity, right? There was great respect and appreciation from the people of America. So we see that his sense of observing things and you know and talking about unity, brotherhood really impressed them and they appreciated, the people of America appreciated him. After his return to India, he spent his time preaching religious tolerance and worked for the upliftment of the poor. Okay, He was still working with the poor after he returned back from America. He established Belur Mat in 1898 which became the center for, of Ramakrishna mission with the motto work is worship. We see here that after becoming so religious, even after seeing God, what is he doing? He is not focusing on the religion but diverting the whole religion towards work and how work can be your worship, how you can truthfully do your work and add to the society. Though he had only a short span of life on earth, the essence of his words have been inspiring men and women throughout the world. Yes, even till date we see that there are said many things that he has written from which we are still getting benefited, right? There are a lot of insightful things that he has said. Even in today's day, if we decide to remove this religious differences, definitely we can move ahead. Our country can move furthermore, right? So yes, all that he said is really precious to us and by this uh, now we have come to the end of this chapter there are some more words like i told you in the last class that i will give you some more words for you to learn these are the word meanings uh, first one is religion believing in a religion okay uh, religious that is i'm so sorry i'll just change it religious believing in a religion culture social behavior of a particular group of people okay a particular group of people they have their own social culture which is social behavior which is called their culture satisfactory fulfilling expectation so when i send you homework and when you do it perfectly and send it to me i'm so satisfied that is what satisfactory means okay experience encounter something or undergo something when you undergo something you get experience right when you write a test you have experienced how to write a test right so that is what is experience inspiring having the effect like whatever with swami vivekananda has done has inspired us it has given us a hope and uh, it has given us some thoughts to ponder on 
and to uh, look into the right direction okay now there are some question and answers which i will do next week for you okay so till here i hope you have understood the story of swami vivekananda and i want you all to write a summary of this chapter i will take a photograph of the whole chapter give it to you you read it thoroughly and take out the important points from that and write a small short summary on that and send it to me i want to know how much you have understood from this chapter okay so until i meet you next stay safe stay at home and bye